I always start by taking off the end uh, cap to the starter on the housing for the brushes. So you just have your two long bolts in the end of it generally. Uh, for this guy, uh, what it requires is a 3 8 inch uh, drive. So we'll just take this guy out. And this one comes out. And then the end cap pops right off. Then the next one I take off is this guy right here, attaching the solenoid to the actual housing. So we'll take those two guys off. Now that these uh, three bolts are taken off, you should be able to separate, put this in the camera, uh, this housing from the bell housing. And sometimes you'll need to tap it with a hammer. These actually just came right apart really nice. And this whole thing just kind of falls apart. Next, I remove the solenoid. So what this guy takes is an eight millimeter drive. And there are two bolts, one here and one here. So we'll just undo those and there's a gasket, rubber gasket in between the solenoid and the bell housing and there's a spring inside of here so when your solenoid activates it pushes this guy pulls it down it's an electromagnet so it'll pull it down and activate this gear you can see right up in here and it will pop your gear up which will engage your flywheel and start your engine so you can kind of weasel that out of this housing it's a little bit better look at it so as this guy moves that's all the action is that's happening inside of this it's moving this gear up and down this mates up with your flywheel Now to separate the rest of the solenoid armature from the bell housing, there's a little C-clip right here that just pops off and then this pin pushes out the other side. And that armature comes right out like so. And then this is ready to be cleaned. This is a good time if you want to, <laughs> to paint these parts. Uh, because it's all completely separated and you don't have to worry about getting paint on all of uh, the windings and everything that's inside of this starter. In order to separate the gear from the shaft, there is a little end plate right here that comes off. And then inside, you can see the brake on it right here. There is a snap ring down in here that you have to get in and pull out. Um, and when I get my tool ready, I'll show you how that works. Sometimes you can just get it with a little flathead screwdriver like this, but what you need to do is get in, get that ring out, and then this collar will slip right up, and then this gear assembly will come over the top of this uh, shaft. Okay, so as you can see, we got the ring just about out. Just keep getting your flathead screwdriver in there. I'm twisting it out. Try not to stab yourself in the hand <laughs> with your screwdriver. Let's pop right out. Like so. And then this collar comes off. And then this whole gear assembly comes right off. Now it's ready to be cleaned um, and re-lubed. You just want to inspect everything, all of the collars deep inside of that guy. Make sure every collar uh, looks good. I don't know if you guys can see on this one. Inside of this guy it's massively pitted. Uh, definitely needs to be replaced. 
Other points of inspection are the collar down in this guy. So when you buy a rebuild kit, I can show you right here, there's a collar that fits in here. So that's that drive shaft. Sits in there and spins. And the final part that we haven't really looked at is, so this is your grounding strap for your solenoid. Um, this little rubber gasket comes out of there. Grommet needs to be replaced. These come out of here as so. Um, obviously these really need to be cleaned. I just bought a new starter um, because replacing this one, it was it was cheap just to buy one. It was 50 bucks for a brand new one, just a peace of mind instead of trying to clean this all up. There's a lot of these braids that are frayed. Uh, there's a lot of oil in this. Uh, but these brushes look fairly decent. So to replace the brushes, you can see down in there, you just buy new brushes. And you use your drive to take these guys off of here. And to do that, you reach underneath of here, and this pin pops out. And then these brushes slide forward. And this whole little unit, including this V-clip, dissembles. And now you don't have to reach a driver down in there. You can just get at them from the top. So pretty easy, I believe this is. Uh, you can just use a flathead on it. So I'm going to just back right off. And these are the actual brushes, which you replace. And these brushes are spinning around making contact on this right here. In order to separate the gearing armature, what you want to do is, obviously I've got this compressed with a vise, and there's a snap ring in here. And you want to take a flathead and pry it against that wheel. And then what you can do is just continually work your way around that guy and it pops right off. Always wear your safety glasses just for that reason. There's a lot of energy. There's a spring compressed right here. So as you take this back off, be very careful because everything will want to separate <laughs> just like so. Let me go grab those parts. <clears throat> and there you have it. Everything is separated. And now you can inspect basically the function of everything. And if it's smooth when it spins, this is pretty nice. Um, what you can do is actually run a screwdriver around this whole uh, component and peel back all this metal and this should slip right off of here this guy maybe i'll just do this because this is just a junk starter just a core charge at this part at this point so let's use it for education in order to take this apart which you shouldn't have to but since this is a junker and it's just a core charge i'm going to show you how to take it apart anyways just so we can see what's inside Cheap gloves, that's what's inside. Um, what you have to do is take pliers and just peel back this lip. This lip holds this all together. So, Okay, collar removed, and that is exactly what it looks like inside. So this is only uh, allowed to spin one direction, can't go the other way obviously, 
because you don't want your starter to spin backwards. Pretty cool. And then we can get in here, all these little springs pop right out. And then this guy separates and these little bearings fall out as well. And so if you really want to do a good job rebuilding one of these, just strip it all the way down. Should come with a new collar as well, but clean up all these bearings, put new grease in here. Definitely needs new grease. Now we'll work on disassembling the solenoid. So on the top of the solenoid, there's two bolts holding the cap on. There's an eight millimeter, uh, two eight millimeter bolts. Should just wiggle apart. Go. Got the cap off. Got the gasket for the cap off. Not a whole lot to it. That's pretty easy.